very good morning to you all and welcome to our service of morning prayer for the fourth Sunday after Trinity. It's wonderful to welcome you once more to our services online. And as always, if there's anything we can do to help you in this difficult time, please get in touch with us. Both you and myself are more than happy to help you in any way that we can at this time. So let's still our hearts and our minds this day as we come before God to worship his holy name. O Lord, and we shall declare your praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Friends in Christ, we come together to meet with God and to take our part in the building up of his church. We will lift up our hearts in thanks and praise, hear from God's holy word and pray for this world and for ourselves. The Bible tells us to approach God confidently through our Lord Jesus Christ. As we do so, we must confess our sins, seeking forgiveness through God's boundless goodness and his mercy. I will arise and go to my Father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no more worthy to be called your son. And so together let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness, as we pray. Merciful, Merciful God, our Maker and, and our, our Judge, Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to, to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us, strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the Righteous One. He is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and strength in our lives. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master abundantly. He has become wealthy. 
He has given him sheep and cattle, silver and gold, male and female servants, and camels and donkeys. My master's wife Sarah has borne him a son in her old age, and has given him everything he owns. And my master made me swear an oath and said, You must not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live. But go to my father's family and to my own clan, and get a wife for my son. When I came to the spring today, I said, Lord God of my master Abraham, if you will, please grant success to the journey on which I have come. See, I am standing beside this spring. If a young woman comes out to draw water, and I say to her, please let me drink a little water from your jar. And if she says to me, drink, and I will draw water for your camels too, let her be the one the Lord has chosen for my master's son. Before I finished praying in my heart, Rebecca came out with a jar on her shoulder. She went down to the spring and drew water, and I said to her, Please give me a drink. She quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I'll water your camels too. So I drank, and she watered the camels also. I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She said, The daughter of Bethuel, son of Nahor, whom Milcah bore to him. Then I put a ring in her nose and the bracelets on her arm, and I bowed down and worshipped the Lord. I praised the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me on the right road to get the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. Now if you will show kindness and faithfulness to my master, tell me. If not, tell me, so I may know which way to turn. So they called Rebecca and asked her, Will you go with this man? I will go, she said. So they sent their sister Rebecca on her way, along with the nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, Our sister may increase to thousands upon thousands. May your offspring possess the cities of their enemies. Then Rebecca and her attendants got ready and mounted the camels and went back with the man. So the servant took Rebecca and left. Now Isaac had come from Beer Laharo, for he was living in the Negev. He went out to the field one evening to meditate, and as he looked up, he saw camels approaching. Rebecca also looked up and saw Isaac. She got down from her camel and asked the servant, Who is that man in the field coming to meet us? He is my master, the servant answered. So he took her veil and covered herself. Then the servant told Isaac all that he had done. Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother Sarah, and he married Rebecca. So she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some words now from Psalm 45. Listen, daughter, and pay careful attention. Forget your people and your father's house. Let the king be enthralled by your beauty. Honour him, for he is your Lord. The city of Tyre will come with a gift. People of wealth will seek your favour. All glorious is the princess within her chamber. Her gown is interwoven with gold. In embroidered garments she is led to the king. Her virgin companions follow her, those brought to be with her. Led in with joy and gladness, they enter the palace of the king. Your sons will take the place of your fathers. You will make them princes throughout the land. I will perpetuate your memory through all generations. Therefore the nations will praise you for ever and ever. Now hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We played the pipe for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. At that time Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned, and revealed them to the little children. Yes, Father, 
for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. sermon words reflecting our gospel reading today are from Roy Gambold who is the lay licensed uh, minister at the parish of Morriston. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Our reading from Matthew's gospel took place after John the Baptist had sent his disciples to Jesus seeking reassurance that Jesus was the Messiah and the very Son of God and he gently tells them to go to John and tell him what they had heard and seen. Jesus then addresses the crowd. Many had rejected John's ministry because he appeared to be too much of an eccentric who wandered around in the desert out of contact with ordinary people. And they were also rejecting Jesus' ministry because they accused him of being too down to earth and too intimately involved with those he had come to seek and to save. Jesus then begins to comment upon the religious attitude of those who will not hear him or follow him. And he compares them to children who play pretend games in the streets and marketplaces of the town. You see, they pretend to be something they are not. Just like we did as children 
in our games. As a boy, we would pretend to be one of our cowboy heroes, which of course was the rage at that time. And I was always Roy Rogers, for obvious reasons, uh, being his namesake. It's sad that when the game of pretense or make-belief is played by those who call themselves Christians. Some feel that they can accept Christ as their saviour without a true conversion that involves real repentance and a wholehearted faith. Jesus wants everyone to be saved, but in this text, he particularly refers to the weary and the burdened. Now Jesus doesn't specify a certain type of burden. It can be any kind. You can be weary of works, working so hard, or weary of being sick. Maybe you are sick and tired of arguing with your spouse or your parents or your children. And you can be weary of always being asked for help. Everyone who is weary is told to come. Why doesn't he ask for the healthy and the energetic and the successful? It isn't that he doesn't want them. It's just that they don't want what he has to offer. Because maybe... They're healthy and successful, they're happy in life, and they have things to do, places to visit. It isn't really that Jesus doesn't want them. He knows that they don't want to come to him. Jesus says, Come to me, all you that are weary and are burdened, and carry in heavy loads, and I will give you rest. So how do we come to Jesus? Wherever two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. He claims to actually be where we speak of him and proclaim his name. And this is why we speak his word and sing hymns of worship in our services. Je Jesus especially comes to us in our prayer time and when we study his word whether in our church groups or at home as we have to at this time there's something special something sacred about singing god's word and being close to him in prayer we may not be able to physically meet together at the moment, but we can meet together in spirit through these online services. Listen to what Jesus says. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Just think what a yoke is, what it is used for. It binds an animal to a plough to break the ground, and it also binds an animal, one animal to another to make the load easier under the power of two animals. When we are rested in his grace and mercy, it doesn't make us lazy. It binds us to Jesus with his mercy and forgiveness. Which, of course, gives us energy to live. We want, don't want to give up on life. We find reasons and energy to live. If we try to live life without being yoked to Jesus, the weight is too much to bear. Sooner or later, life wears us out. But Jesus puts the yoke of the law and failure around his own neck. He bears the burdens of our sins. 
he then yokes us to himself so that he can bear that burden and sin and death and hell. He then takes the reins and leads the way through life. He doesn't drive us with a whip. He doesn't yell at us. He is gentle and humble at heart. Whatever struggles we have in life are easy and light and light when we know that he bore the payment for our sins. Whatever evils we face in the world, it is easier knowing that Jesus is leading us and giving us strength throughout. It is so much better knowing that this life is not all that life is about. It makes us want to live again, knowing that through faith in Jesus, we go to heaven when we die. Jesus hasn't invited us here to torture us, but to bless us with rest. Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Being yoked to Jesus means that he is always alongside us. When we bring our burdens to Jesus, he doesn't take them away, but he shares our load and helps us through life. Amen. We affirm our faith now in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have gifts to share. Accept and use our gifts for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Lord, show us your mercy and grant us your salvation. Keep our nation under your care and guide us in justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness and make your chosen people joyful. Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for you are our help and strength. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew us by your Spirit. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. So we continue now with our prayers. Holy God and Lord of the dance, we raise our prayers to you in the power of the Spirit, which unites us with Christ Jesus, trusting that you will hear our prayers and use them to accomplish your will for the world and for the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we pray for all people who seek to follow your way in their lives. Let your church speak your word of truth with confidence and in unity, so that those who are searching and listening will be able to see and hear clearly your message of love and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for people and nations whose troubles, brought about by this global pandemic, drown out your music of harmony, where the violent heat of anger seeks to destroy your word of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for the people around us in our neighbourhoods and our places of work. Give us sensitivity and insight into their needs and vulnerabilities so that we may learn to love our neighbour as ourselves. Help us to be responsible and sensible in all our interaction with those around us so that we do not increase the chance of infecting or being infected by those whom we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for people we know who are ill, anxious or bereaved. For those that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, we pray that you will lead them and us in peace towards healing and wholeness of mind and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Merciful God, many people die by violence, war and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly for these sins against your love, and gather them to the eternal kingdom of your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us take now a moment of stillness Bring to mind your families, your friends, your neighbours. Bring to mind members of our church families in this ministry area. Bring to mind the communities in which we are placed and in which we are called to serve and to show God's love. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Loving God, we offer ourselves to you in faith and confidence. Show us as we go out into the world how we can best prepare ourselves to be part of your response to our prayers. Fill us with the spirit of life, 
which was in Christ Jesus, your Son and our Saviour. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we pray for the coming of God's Kingdom, we pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God and merciful Father, we give you hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all your people. We bless you for our creation and preservation and all the blessings of this life, but above all your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such a sense of your mercies that our hearts may be truly thankful and that we may praise you not only with our lips, but in our lives, serving you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. We pray together, Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created, and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service, and live this day in love to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your Spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you today and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Just before we sing our final hymn, thank you for joining us today once more. And each week we will continue with our online services of morning prayer and services of spiritual communion. I hope that you find in words of comfort and hope in our services and as I said at the start if there's anything we can do to help please contact Hugh or myself and we will be only too happy to help in any ways we can but just for now God bless <laughs>